Hey everyone, this week we have something very special for you. Jesse and I reached out to some of our listeners to do some spotlight interviews. And today we're going to let them introduce themselves and we're also going to talk a little bit about their day to day lives as moms trying to run businesses and what they might say to someone, to a, a mom friend who is nervous about starting running their own business at home while being a mom. Balancing building a successful business and being a superstar mom is hard, and yet, in today's digital world, it's more common than ever. The question becomes, how do we successfully grow a business and children at the same time? Join us for a candid conversation as we share our insights into marketing and motherhood. I'm Angela Reeder. And I'm Jessie Valle. Welcome to the Marketing Moms Podcast. I'm so excited for these interviews. <laughs> Me too. We were so much fun. We had so much fun. Such a blast. We're definitely going to have to do that again. And I think it's interesting after we chatted with each one of these moms at the end, we were like, we're going to pull you back on. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, we just enjoyed talking to them so much. And it, what was interesting is we actually kind of background, we talked to three different moms. And the crazy thing is that it turned out one of them was just beginning a newbie, one has been in business for a few years, and then one has been in business over 10 years. So it was really nice to get the perspective of three different types of marketing moms and where they're at in their journey and and just kind of the, the perspective of things along the way. I was thinking about it, Angela, like we're hitting seven years in business. How crazy I know, is that? I, believe it. I was just thinking about that the other day. Like, I, I cannot believe it's been seven years. I know. We are no online business spring chickens anymore. No. <laughs> but Sometimes that does not mean like we don't it. have plenty of our own struggles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So this episode, just to warn you, is going to be a little bit longer, but it's totally worth it. Uh, to listen to these perspectives. So we're going to play like have the the moms intro themselves and then kind of go in like Angela said into what their day-to-day life is like and talking to to them about what they'd say to someone who's nervous, which interestingly enough for this first interview is kind of for her because she is the one that's just trying to get started and kind of her perspective. So without further ado, let's jump into the interview with Marissa. All right. Well, then I will start here. First, Marissa, did you actually begin your business? No. (laughs) I have a website that doesn't have any copy on it yet. And I have like an Instagram and a Twitter and a Facebook page. That's about it. I feel like I need to grill like a hot seat you right now to be like, That's fine. what have we said? You have to sell before you do those things. I know. <laughs> but they were That's... easy things that I could do without right. having to do the hard things. Exactly. Right. Which is selling and putting yourself out there. Yeah. Yes. So I just um, need to like, just need to create copy for my website to like launch, launch it. Yeah. Well, the truth be told, you could probably just do some samples of work, not even put it on your website, and then you can show people as you try to win them Yes, over. I actually do have some spec pieces I've been working on, but I want to like, the website's the pretty part, right, Jesse? I know, I know. <laughs> so I, I want to get like the website up and running, but I should probably just start pitching at this point. Yeah. Because if I don't I start, should. I'm not just not going to do it. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to your like day-to-day life and reality of trying to do that while being a mom and you still have another nine to five, right? Yes, that I actually, um, so when I came back from my maternity leave, I tried to sell the whole, let me work from home five days a week because they were having us at three days at home, two days in the office. Mm -hmm. They didn't go for it. So Mm -hmm. I started looking for other jobs. So, um, as of next Tuesday, 
I will no longer be working at the company that I currently work for. And then I start a new job at a different company the Monday after Thanksgiving. (laughs) Okay. So let me ask you, why did you do that instead of just going all in on your copywriting business? Because I'm terrified. (laughs) That's the honest, the honest truth. Like if I pitch and no one wants to use me and I can't get any work and then we're not bringing in any money, you know what I mean? I do. It's terrifying to, to not have the security of a nine to five. And that's hard for me. From experience though, having that all in attitude was really the push I needed. Yeah. Otherwise I'd always lean on that crutch. Yeah, I know that going all in on the the copywriting, it's just, I feel like with my lack of experience and not really knowing how the, how people are going to receive me when I do start pitching is really, really terrifying. I've got the, I've got the imposter syndrome. I've got the perfectionism. I've got the, I have a baby now mm-hmm. <laughs> who relies on me. We have a house that we have to pay for. And it's just really scary to to give all of a steady paycheck up to go free, full freelance. Yeah. It's really hard for me to jump in and ask you some of these questions because it, it's like, okay, so one of like literally in the next question is what would you say to a mom who is nervous about getting started with running a business? <laughs> I need someone to say that to but me. That's you. That's it you. It is me. Yeah. It is me. So I guess a better question would be, what would you want someone to say to you? (laughs) Uh, Well, uh, I don't need anyone to say anything particular to me. I just, I need this, the, because you guys guys have talked about having someone that just gives you that motivation, that gives you that you can do it and you are going to do it. So just do it. Mm-hmm. I need that more in my life than, you know, I, I, yes, encouragement is good and telling me this, that, and the other is good. But in the end, I just need someone to tell me that it's so, not tell me. I need, I need to be okay with failing. Mm-hmm. And that's real, real hard for me. Oh no, I feel you. <laughs> failing really is hard. so difficult for me to accept. Yeah. Because I've always been straight A's. I got a, a my first job three months after I graduated from college. I was always the perfect child because I kind of had to be. I, I have an autistic brother, so I always felt a lot of pressure. Not that my parents put that on me. I put that on me because mm-hmm. I felt like it all relied on me because he, he can't. Right. So I'm really hard on myself, and failing is ter- – I'm going to cry right now talking about it. It's terrifying right. to to – to, to fail or to feel like you could fail. Yeah. I think another thing that people get held up on is the idea that entrepreneurship is not the expected path. Mm -hmm. And that's what was really hard for me because I'm, I'm exactly like you, Marissa, straight A's, went to school, got a job, thought I was Mm -hmm. set for life. And then I had a baby and I was like, (laughs) I really want to be home with my baby. And And then it's like, but I never had the entrepreneurial bug. I was never like, I'm going to build a business. Never, ever. I'm not the type. Mm -hmm. I made it work because it's what, at the end of the day, like I really, really wanted. And um, yeah, I I didn't do it alone. Right. I never had the wanting to start a business. That always sounded super weird to me. But then I uh, met my husband Mm -hmm. who who is all about having his own business and starting all of these different ventures that may or may not pan out. But he was the one that was like, I think the freelancing copywriting would be great for you. I was like, okay. (laughs) So I, I bought a course and I, you know, went through all the modules and then it was just kind of like, okay, now, now you do it. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. what do you mean now you do it? You know what I mean? Like they, it taught me a lot of the principles and it all makes sense. And it's just the, the pitching to people, Hey, hire me to do this is yeah. terrifying. <laughs> Cause I it's don't even to, like, I don't know ahead. where to start. Yeah. Know? It's hard to accept that like somebody would actually pay me money for that. 
That's right. Why you pay me to do that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And it well, also it's a little bit like the difference between sitting in driver's ed and learning all of the stuff about the car and how to drive and then actually sitting in the driver's seat and having someone be like, okay, turn the key on and start driving. They're like, I could get into an accident out there. What are you right? talking like, about? I could run into something. <laughs> That's a really good metaphor, actually. I never thought of it that way. She's full of them. What can I, I say? I am. I really, I really am. Uh, yeah, but yeah. So I'm curious. Um, I know you said your husband kind of said that he thought freelance copywriting would be a good fit for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that like, do you enjoy copywriting? Is that something that you've always kind of liked to do or like writing in general? Well, I used to write, <laughs> this is really embarrassing. I used to write a lot of fan fiction when I was in high school. Yeah, it's not because embarrassing. Nobody can it's see. It's really not embarrassing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, because I, I was always a big reader, but then I mm-hmm. also wanted to tell my own story about the characters that I was reading yeah. about because I wasn't getting what I wanted from the books, so I had to yeah. take care of all of the issues that <laughs> were presenting themselves in my head. So I always liked writing, um, but I never really thought that you could make a living doing that. Mm-hmm. Unless you were super lucky and got like a book deal. I didn't know copywriting was really a thing. I mean, I knew of, you know, copy and sales stuff and ads you get in the mail and stuff like that. But I never really thought of it as someone has to write those words. Mm -hmm. Right. So I knew, uh, I kind of knew of it in the broad sense. I just never thought that you did that for a job. And now I know that a lot of people do that for a job. All right. I felt like I had to cut, cut us off just because, man, these conversations are so very interesting. Um, But we will get to the rest of the interviews and we're going to keep chopping them up and, and pull them out over several episodes. But Man, my heart just tugs when I listen to Marissa. If I had a dollar for every time she said terrifying. (laughs) Well, and she's not wrong. I know. I I remember back to where I was and yeah, I mean, terrifying is a, terrified is a very good way to describe how you feel when you're jumping into the unknown and I mean, that's really what it was. She even said it. She said, it's really hard to give up that stable income, something for sure, something stable. But the truth is, even that's not stable and for sure, because you could get fired tomorrow. You never know. And that's something I I think about, too, is like, it's not as stable as you think. Right. It feels stable. Entrepreneurship's almost more stable because you are in control. Having a nine to five and being a W-2 employee, you are not 100% in control. Yeah. Yeah. It it feels more stable because that's what we're used to. Like we're used to seeing people in these jobs. And I think also, especially for people our age, when we were growing up, people had the same job for 15, 20 years before they would retire or more before they would retire. And that's not the case anymore. People don't generally stay at one company for 20 years and then retire. They stay for a couple of years and then move somewhere else or, you know, the company downsizes or whatever. And so it's not, it's not like we think it is anymore. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, the idea of working from home and working online is not as foreign I mean, and even Marissa was saying like her company was doing the whole three days at home, two in the office, right? which is actually very common these days after the pandemic. Right. And yet she's still scared to make that leap, even when I think personally that it was more of a leap for you and me back seven years ago. <laughs> right. <laughs> when everybody thought we were absolutely bonkers. Yes. Yeah. Everybody thought we were out of our minds. Yeah. And well, we'll get, we'll get there in our third interview where, uh, Mm -hmm. where, uh, the mom of the person we interviewed was like, yeah, that's a bad idea. (laughs) Terrible idea. (laughs) Um, anyway. Okay. Well, we're, 
I feel like we should definitely jump into the next interview. It mm-hmm. So just, oh, and one more thing. So you don't have to be too, too scared for Marissa. I helped her make a connection with a copywriter that I knew. And that copywriter critiqued her work. So she's like, show me your samples. And then she gave her almost like some mock assignments. Like they were real assignments. I mean, like, hey, this is what I've been hired to do. Why don't you try your right. hand at it? Just right. to like say, this is something Here's a some real life person. Yeah, this is something a real life person wants. Like the my copywriter friend was actually going to do the assignment. She wasn't going to use Marissa's work, but it was like a, a practice thing, right? Like, hey, mm-hmm. this is something I've actually in real life been asked to do. Why don't you try it? And I'll critique your work. And she said that like Marissa reached out and was just like, thank you so much. She's been so helpful. When Marissa was like, well, sure, I took a course. And then I'm like, but then now what? Like, <laughs> go get yeah. a job. What? Like, go get someone to hire me. What? <laughs> so the next step for her was definitely, hey, find a real life mentor who's been doing it longer than you have and see what kind of help they can do to support you. Because that's what Marissa needed. She needed support. I couldn't do it. I'm not a copywriter. Angela couldn't yeah. do it. She's not a copywriter. Oh, gosh, But I no. knew a copywriter and I helped connect them. And so I feel like a fairy godmother. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Marissa's doing all right. I don't know if she's actually reached out and gotten new clients yet, but or any you know clients, but I'll have to check back in with her. Maybe at the end of our whole series, we check back in with each one and see how they're doing. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So that was Marissa, someone who was just starting out slash scared to make the leap. Next, we're rolling into an interview with Julie, who has actually um, been in business on her own for a couple of years. And hearing her perspective is very interesting as well. So without further ado, this is Julie. So I have been working from home um, for about three years, but I've been working on my own for probably a year and a half now. Um, I was working for a separate company that um, did a lot of email marketing and that sort of thing. And so I learned a lot from them. Um, and then sort of branched out on my own. And now I have several clients and I do social media marketing. So that is my specialty, um, you know, posting for them, creating graphics, um, writing copy and all of that. So that's what I do. Okay. And how's it going now? This must be a busy time of year for you. It is busy time of year. Um, everybody's running ads. Everybody wants their events promoted. And so, um, it is busy and the, the harder part is when my kids have breaks during this time because, of course, school is out at weird times and you have half days or holidays and things like that. And so you have to really adjust your schedule to make sure that you continue to meet your deadlines that you need to, that you've promised to all of your clients. And um, but I mean, you just you make it work. Yeah. yeah. So what does kind of your day to day life look like with your business and your kids? So. Um, When I first started working from home, I was actually homeschooling full-time as well. And I like to say that we were homeschooling before COVID made it cool um, because we were homeschooling our kids since they were in preschool. And uh, I started working from home and just could not balance it like at all. Um, It was too much. My priorities were not they were fluctuating all over the place and I felt like I was floundering. So um, we kind of had to readdress our priorities in our home and figure out, okay, if I'm going to be at home full-time working, what does that mean for me as a mom? What does that mean for my kids and for their education and everything like that? And so um, through a series of crazy events, (laughs) um, we decided to put our kids into um, a school that is five minutes from where my husband works and it worked out really great. We love this school. Um, So that's where we ended up putting them. So now that they're in school full time, I 
definitely have a few more quiet hours in my day than I did before, um, which I really think for our family makes a huge, huge difference um, because you just feel so pulled as a mom all the time um, when your kids are at home. And even right now, my kids are on Thanksgiving break and they're at home and I'm like, all right, go to your room and go read a book or something while I'm on this call. Um, But it's definitely a lot easier because now I have, you know, six uninterrupted hours where I can focus and then I'm still able to go pick them up at the end of the day at school and um, be there for special holiday events and, you know, birthdays and things like that at their school field trips. Um, So the day to day kind of varies, but for the most part, um, I'm a morning person. I I like to get up early. I like to get all my work done as soon as I possibly can because um, I'm in my mid thirties and by the time lunchtime hits, I'm like ready for a nap, you know? (laughs) Um, yeah, but, but yeah, I mean, since they've been at school, it's been a lot different when they were home. It was definitely harder. Yeah. We did a year of virtual school because of COVID and Mm -hmm. I decided I could never do homeschooling. (laughs) I, (laughs) it just did not work out very well. Yeah, it's it's it can be abrupt if especially in when COVID when everyone had to all at the same time and you know not everybody can just take off of work and focus on their kids education. So totally get it. It's very hard. What would you say to a mom who was nervous about getting started with running a business and what would you say to put their mind at ease? There are a lot of hard lessons that I had to learn in the very beginning. And I think that, um, you know, I love how candid you all are on your podcast about the realities of working from home as a mom. Um, But when I first started out, there was very little about the realities of what this looks like. And um, like for me, when I first started, I started working for my friend's company And she was married, but didn't have any kids at the time. And she was starting this brand new company. And she was like, I know you're looking for a job you can do from home. You can work for me. And so I was like, yeah, that sounds great. I'll work at night. I'll work on the weekends. And in reality, it just didn't work for our family. And um, she was in a very different kind of hustle than I could commit to. And so it was really difficult. And I felt like I'm, this is not going to work. I'm never going to keep up. And I'm the type of person where if I can't give a hundred percent to something and if I can't do it well, then it just crushes me. And so I felt like I was failing as a mom. I was failing as a wife. I was failing as an employee because I just couldn't keep up. And I think that, um, something that I learned is that, not everyone's hustle is your hustle, you know, like making sure that your priorities <laughs> are um, in line with what you want for your family. Like, is it to start your own business? Is it to advance your career or is it just to buy Christmas presents that year? Like what is the main focus of you working from home? What, what do you want out of this? And um, I, I, that season was very, very difficult because I ended up um, completely bombing my work. Like, you know, my children are there right in front of me. So they're the reality that I know. They're the here and now. They're right there. I have to attend to all of their needs. So work just went kind of to the wayside and I ended up getting let go. And honestly, I don't blame them. I'm like, yeah, you're right. (laughs) I couldn't keep up. There's no way I could keep up. But then I was able to learn some really hard lessons that I didn't know um, that I needed to brace myself for when starting out with my own business and working from home is you need to learn how to fail well, and you need to learn how to recover from failure well. And um, I'm not a person who likes to fail. So those were hard times. I wallowed a bit in my grief of, oh no, I'm a terrible employee. I'm a terrible mom. I can't keep up. I'm going to fail at everything I do. When really it wasn't my, you know, I could do the work. It wasn't that I wasn't capable and my value as a person wasn't, you know, caught up in that. It was, okay, like I said before, what are the priorities of our family? 
what is the reason for me working from home and what is my hustle? What is the reality of how that works? How can I um, insert my projects and my goals into the reality that I already have? You know, you're not going to get rid of your husband and your children, hopefully, <laughs> just to, you know, work. Um but you have to figure out how to do that for your individual family. And, um, you know, it's so hard and it's so hard in the social media world that we live in of trying to keep up with the Joneses. And um, you think that, well, it works for them. So why isn't it working for me? Well, it's working for them because that's their family and you're your family. And so once you figure that out, and um, you become comfortable in your own skin and your own family and what your family goals are, then I think that it's a lot easier to buckle down and say, okay, these are my goals. These are the kind of clients that I want to have. These are the kind of projects that I want to do. And it all starts to become a little bit more clearer um, once you grasp some of those, those hard realities that don't always get talked about of, you know, you can't just make millions in your sleep at home. <laughs> like it, that's just not how it works. So. Okay. Gosh, so many golden nuggets in there. Yeah. I, I really love the, loved her perspective on that. I did too. Um, and it was really interesting to hear a perspective of someone who was like, listen, I tried some things and I failed. But the fact that she did not give up, and she recognized that her goals differed from the goals of her friend who was at a different place in her life and had different aspirations. That was just, man, it was so inspirational to listen to her, her interview. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's one of the reasons that we did these is, you know, we love to share our perspective and our experiences. And I know we say a lot, like, these are just our experiences. Mm -hmm. We're just sharing what works for us. And so that was one of the really fun things about these interviews was to be able to add different perspectives and experiences. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, like I said, I just love how the big thing for her was figuring out what it was that you particularly need and what your goals are. Like, like she said, is it, you know, just to get money for Christmas? Is it to replace your income? Like you have to decide what success looks like for you and then you can work towards it without the influence of what anybody else thinks or what they need because their needs are going to be different. Yeah, that everybody's success looks different. And I, I know we've talked a lot about that before because that kind of gets – glossed over a lot in mm -hmm. the especially for moms it, the idea that like everybody's looking for the same thing and everybody's working toward the yeah. same thing gets pushed a lot yeah and so yeah it's really important to know like what what exactly am I working for because if you're working for if you're putting in the work that's going to get you to a place that's not where you want to be it's going to be really frustrating and hard and terrifying <laughs> Yeah. Like, terrifying, but if you know what your buzzword of the day. But <laughs> if you if you know what exactly you're working for and you can put in the steps to get to that point, you're a mm -hmm. lot more likely to keep at it and keep trying and feel more motivated. Yeah, for sure. All right. Third up, we have an interview with Cabrina. She is someone who's actually been in business 12 years. Um so she's been in business a little longer than us, which, you know, it's just awesome to hear that perspective. And and so uh, I guess we'll just kind of hear her story, her intro, and what she would say to a mom about being nervous. And then you will hear from us again. Okay. So I should start by saying... I'm the CEO of the Cabrina Morgan Co. And under that massive umbrella of all the projects that I've undertaken since 2012 is Capostrophe Media. And that is where I met you guys. So thank you so much for having me today. <laughs> and uh, as I said, I started the entrepreneurial journey in 2012. 
so back then it wasn't trending as much no. No. <laughs> it, it wasn't trending and to have access to certain information you have to be a veteran full-time entrepreneur and you know what rooms to get into so starting out there wasn't much community to be like here you know go here whatever so it was very rough <laughs> and then uh, fast forward to 2022 like everyone knows an entrepreneur now mm -hmm. everyone yeah. knows somebody who does something or makes something or provides a service that helps somebody in some way so right now I'm just like taking the tools and the hard lessons <laughs> that were acquired back then so that when you're just starting out and as a mom it's not like the easiest thing to do so as I said, I started in 2012 and my daughter was born in 2010. So I became, I chose <laughs> to become an entrepreneur. <laughs> Can you imagine that conversation telling my mom, who's a nurse, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've got to become an entrepreneur with my two-year-old. She's like, ah, that's not, and I'm Caribbean, right? I'm Jamaican. So she's like, yeah, that's not, don't do that. <laughs> that's not for <laughs> sure money. That's a bad choice. And I was like, <laughs> I think I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> and I'm very passionate about it. And she's like, yeah, that's a bad choice. So it was kind of like, I'm going to do it. So with that, not having the support and continuing throughout the years, it's like, okay, I don't want anyone else to go through that, especially as a mom having to worry about your child and worry about where the next meal is going to come from and worrying about I'm going to do this. As my mom said, you know, it's not for sure money. I have to make sure I'm taken care of and my child is taken care of. So that's just been like my journey. I'm like, okay, I've been through it. I don't want other moms to go through it. How can I help? And through that, I've established a few businesses. Mm. <laughs> I've explored a few options and I, I'm dedicated to this. And a few of the other projects that have helped a lot of like other females throughout the years, I'm going to bring them back next year. But I wanted to make sure that, you know, now I'm stable, I'm more secure in who I am. I'm, I'm more secure in my I am statement and I can help my clients with that as well. And especially as a mom, you need to be secure, not just for yourself, but for your child and the business that you're trying to grow. I, I remember like sharing with my clients, especially when they're starting out and they're like, oh, I can't do it. Because we know the initial fear, like, okay, I'm going to jump. I'm going to start. And they're like, I can't do it. And then before it was like, okay, drawing on my own experience. And then now it's, now I'm at that age <laughs> where it's like, okay, I'm trying to tell the younger generation. So a lot of stuff they can't identify with. Right. Mm -hmm. When I'm like, oh, I remember like I had to go to the library to access like Wi-Fi <laughs> yeah. so that I could send emails because you had to watch your data. And, you know, texting used to cost money. <laughs> it was like 10 cents per text. Yeah. So you had to like bootstrap when you're starting. So now it's just like now that I've been through it, it's like finding other resources where I can you know, communicate with them on their level where they also understand and it's not something totally foreign to them, which is why I actually love your book because it's become like, a, I don't want to say Bible, but it's kind of like an entrepreneurial <laughs> Bible to me. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so thank they'll you. come in and they're like, oh my gosh, the guilt. And I find that it works not just for moms because some of my clients, like the younger ones, they're like, but they've birthed other, you know, careers they've birthed their art and to them it's like mm -hmm. their child like they went through the entire process you know like we did the nine months with the child inside of us and they did the same thing with the idea until they gave birth yeah. to it so now it's time to nurture so the mom guilt that you talk about in one of the chapters <laughs> I find myself constantly quoting that they're like oh I feel like I'm like listen here here's the page <laughs> go read this <laughs> Or I'll take That's pictures. Awesome. A lot of times when you see me tag you with stuff in yeah. in my stories, it's because the topic of conversation came up where your book is like here. And I'm like, you know what? You don't even have to take my word for it. Here's a <laughs> screenshot. Here's a or read what Val had to say. Okay. Yeah. Go, go read go read this. Yeah. <laughs> and they'd be like, Oh, that's exactly what I needed. I'm like, so I'm like, thank you for that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> because that. as I said, 
the resources that is available now, I didn't have access to. So mm-hmm. I want to make sure that I yeah. have all the necessary information so that I can help those moms who are deciding that I'm going to do this, right? Yeah. So kind of piggybacking on that, for someone who's nervous about getting yeah. started with running a business and being a mom and all the things, mm-hmm. what would you specifically say to them to kind of put their mind at ease? Uh, there's really nothing I could say. <laughs> it, that <laughs> is an internal, no, really, truly, it's, it's an internal conversation mm-hmm. because I could come with all the affirmations. I could come with all the plans. I could come with all the information and here and step by step break it down but until it makes sense to you until it connects to your soul and you're like because at the end of the day it doesn't matter what advice I give you it's you and your child that's going to be in it if it doesn't work out it's you and them it doesn't matter what external advice came in or I said this or your mom told you to do this if it doesn't work out and it absolutely fails because that is a possibility it's you and your child. Are you going to be okay? Is your child mm-hmm. going to be okay? So it becomes the fear or the faith. If you, I tell everyone in my, because I do let's have coffee because every morning <laughs> I grab my cup. It's like, all right, 50-50 going into this. If you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. The next 30 days that we work together, it's proven one of those theories right. So if you think you can, we're, we're going to figure it out and we're going to make it work. We're going to see, we're going to put in all the research. We're going to find the time. We're going to get clear on where it is that we want to go. If you think you can't do it, there's, there's nothing I can do or anybody else can do to change your mind. Because if you are dead set on this is going to fail, even if I give you a plan and say, here, 30 days, you do this, you post this, you post this, you connect with this person. If you do not think it's going to work, you're not going to take the initiative to actually start because that fear is going to keep you stuck. And then you're not going to move. And even if you have a million dollar idea with the plans and the keys to doing it, if you stay stuck and you hold on to that fear, it's not going to work. So if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. It's a matter of proving one of those theories and see which one's going to work out. So... It's not what everyone wants to hear. It's not like, you know, you can do it. Come on. But no, I'm not going no, to be I mean, unrealistic in all of this. Yeah. Yeah. We like, that's one thing that we kind of try to pride ourselves in is like, listen, yeah. I don't want to do the sugar coated version. I want the yeah, real, exactly. rough, raw, like true mm-hmm. version. Tell and, me what I'm in for. And you're, yeah. you're completely yeah. right. Like it doesn't matter. Like I could, it's like leading that horse to water, but you can't mm-hmm. make him drink. Like yeah. I could give you everything you need to get started a perfect path, but until you mm-hmm. in your head decide that you can do this, you want this, and you're going to do this, it's not yeah. going to happen. It's yeah. really not. Yeah. And I like what you said about it's you and your kid that's in it. Mm-hmm. Because I think that's a piece that gets missed a lot, especially with a lot of the, the bigger influencers. Um, I know you probably heard me complain about the six figures at nap time type thing (laughs) um my kids didn't nap they stopped napping at a year old nobody was napping when I was building my business Mm -hmm. Um, but it you know it is I think people forget that like everybody has different experiences everybody's in a different place when they start their business and so you know you really do have to kind of take that into account when you're trying to talk to people about starting and running a business yeah And a lot of time too, like we get so focused on the dream. We get so focused on the goal. We get so focused on where it is that we want to go. We come up with the notion that, oh, kids are so resilient. They'll get over it. Right. You know, it'll be fine. Like they'll, they'll, they'll endure, but really and truly like all the stresses that we go through and that we take on that we don't think they see and they don't feel they're out there with us. So they feel it with us. So it's kind of like, now we have to, all right, mental health is a huge issue. And with everything, with the instability, with the school and taking kids out of school. And again, with this whole, everyone's sick, like it takes a toll on them. So now it's like, okay, we have to be, mom, we have to be business owners, but we also have to be moms. And in that, like, these are small humans, right? They have the same experiences that we do. So we have to 
you know, check in on them and be like, no, really, truly, how you doing? <laughs> like, yeah. are you yeah. okay? Because they they try to be so brave for us because they understand. They see mommy's trying, right? They see yeah. mom's doing her best, mom's helping other people. And they take pride in that because my daughter, she tells everybody at school what I do, right? <laughs> yeah. When I too. put out my, my book of poetry, she brought one to school and she showed everybody. And it was just Aww. like... Yeah, that's because that's their win as well. When we win, they win. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like, okay, when we set our goals, we have to in- implement theirs as well. Like, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? And in that, we teach them how to also set goals for themselves so that they don't have to take the time to learn the stuff that we're learning at our age. So whatever we do for us, I feel like we also do for that generation as well so that they have more structure and more balance so that they can be more well-rounded. Mm. Loved that interview so much. Me I love too. them all, let's be honest. But <laughs> it, I just love how in everything Cabrina mentioned, she made sure to bring the kid into it. Like, yes. don't forget, you're a mom. Yeah. Like, blah, 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 but you're a mom. So this yes. too. Yeah, I really, really loved that. And I I liked how she talked about, especially for moms that are starting out, like it's you and your kids mm-hmm. that's in it. So yeah. it has to be a thing that you want and you are ready for. Well, I also like how she mentioned we, we should share our wins and losses with our kids. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think I talk enough with my kids. I mean, I know my oldest is only seven. But I bet she could – she's going to be my biggest cheerleader always, yeah. right? So sharing with her when I have some wins or even losses is – I mean, she she asks me, hey, mommy, what would you do at work today? And it feels like the role reversal of how was school today? Fine. Fine. <laughs> it feels like the role reversal. Mommy, how was work today? What would you do at – things it was good but instead maybe I should explain more and you know teach her things but also share with her when I'm struggling because then our children are gonna know hey even mommy struggles it's okay Mm -hmm. if I struggle too sometimes and also teaching them the coping skills instead of just hiding behind the fine all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, my kids ask a lot, you know, what I've got going on. Um, they recognize like videos. So if I'm watching, if somebody sent me a loom or I'm rewatching a, a call, they'll kind of be, are you on a call? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, so, you know, they're learning and they, they see me, getting frustrated with something I'm working on, or they see me get excited about something. They ask me about, you know, do you like it when your clients do this thing? Or, you know, I, I got a Christmas card from a client. Just, I opened it up yesterday and I was so excited and I was showing it to them. So I think it is important to share like, a you know, my kids have no idea what I do, but they Mm -hmm. see me trying. Yeah. (laughs) They see me trying. They see me working. And, you know, as they get older, they understand a little bit, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I also like how both Cabrina and Julie mentioned that they love our perspective of this is the reality instead of, you know, instead of just the sugar coated version And kind of like Julie had mentioned, this stuff, like the content we're putting out with the reality and all this stuff, like it just wasn't really around. No. Even a few years ago. I mean, it certainly wasn't around when we started. Yeah. When we started, I just remember hearing all the, all the fake stuff. Mm -hmm. It never felt real. And I don't particularly remember hearing anybody's perspective specifically on being a mom as well yeah it was just always like you have your business side and your personal side and that's it Mm -hmm. and we're over here like 
no, like it's your life. It's all one. It's combined. Yeah. Like, yes, we can do things for motherhood and yes, we can do things for business. But at the end of the day, they are one and the same. Like yeah. it is your life. Yeah, absolutely. It it was very, it was very fake and it felt very unattainable and it was mm-hmm. really frustrating because, because of that, because it seemed like it, the people who had the microphone looked like they were doing everything so easily and everything was so perfect. And like you said, they had their business life and their personal life and it was, you know, perfectly fine. And so when you're in it and you're trying to build that business and you are kind of in the messy part of it, it felt really frustrating and and very much like, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. (laughs) But you're not doing anything wrong. Mm -hmm. You're not. And and also just back to what Julie said about knowing what you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and not basing it off of what other people want or what other people are striving for. Yeah. It's okay to have a goal of, you know, covering gymnastics fees or Christmas mm-hmm. presents or just having a little bit to put back every month for a vacation. Yeah. And it's okay to want to have – you know, a hugely wildly successful business that, you know, double your current income or whatever. Like those are perfectly fine. It's just that you have to be working toward, it has to be what you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we are excited to continue this conversation. And so the next few episodes, we're definitely bringing Marissa, Julie, and Cabrina back to continue talking about other things. Um, But for now, I think that this pretty much wraps up just what we could say to a mom who's nervous about getting started and kind of getting that introduction of our three lovely interviewees and head over to marketingmomspodcast.com for your own personal next steps and all all the extras and goodies and, and things that we have there. I'm just, I'm like sitting here just so in my head, like, man, so inspirational. Yes. Let's go win the day. (laughs) Yes. Oh, and welcome to the new year. Oh, yes. We forgot that at the beginning. (laughs) (laughs) Happy new year. Happy new year. (laughs) Make this year better than any other year. Although I feel like. In reality, if we're talking about, hey, let's be real marketing moms, start any day. Yes. Like, it could be like, I don't know, happy March 4th, you know, like, (laughs) happy July 12th, like, just whatever. Yes. It doesn't have to be happy January 1st. Use this as your, you can do this. Yes. All right. Well, until next week, we'll chat at you guys later. Thank you for joining us today. We're so honored. This is where you chose to spend your time. If this episode helped you in some way, please share it with another mom who needs to hear it. We're in this together. And if you're ready for next steps free goodies, and more, head over to marketingmomspodcast.com. We'll see you next week.